Hello everyone and welcome to Wally Mods again. I'd like to apologize about the lack of content for the past couple months. I was going back to college and classes were starting up again. But under the light of current circumstances, I am back home and I have a lot more time to start working on personal projects such as modding and video games. I'm going to be continuing my Factorio modding series and in this video we're going to be going over modifying pre-made prototypes to make your own items in game. So let's jump right into the video. In order to add your own prototypes you need to go to your modding folder and add another folder which is labeled prototypes as you can see here. And in this folder you're going to make all your Lua files which are going to be processed during the data phase and in these files you're going to define your prototypes and add them to the in-game data. As you can see here, I already created a feather armor Lua file, and this is going to be an example prototype that I make for you in this video. Now on the right here, in Visual Studio Code, we see the contents of the feather armor Lua file. For this prototype, since it's very much like the in-game armor prototype, I'm just going to do a copy of the object and then modify a few things to my liking. In programming and computer science in general, there's a few ways to copy objects. I won't go into them today, but the one that we're going to use is called a deep copy, as you see here. And this basically is going to copy every single element we need into its new place in memory so that we can modify it without modifying the original version, basically. So I'm going to make a local variable called feather armor, which we will use in this Lua file. And I'm going to do a deep copy of the data.raw armor light armor table. Now in order to see what everything that you can copy is, you can head over to factorio.com, wiki.factorio.com slash data raw and you can scroll down and these are all the pre-made data structures that we can copy and modify for our own use. In this example I'm going to be copying the armor data.raw and there's a few different types. So we have our armor and then I'm going to be copying the light armor because feather armor I want to make even worse than light armor. If we click on the armor link, we can see all of the properties that it contains, such as ones that it's inherited from, other classes, and new ones that it introduces. Back in our feather armor Lua file, I'm going to rename this feather armor.name to be feather armor. And this is the name we'll be using in our code to reference this new item that we're creating. Also, I'm going to be changing up the feather armor icon and I'm going to be setting a certain a gray tint on it with a little bit of alpha value just so we can know it is separate from the light armor icon from our deep copy. And to see where I got this icon property from in the table, we can come over to the left and find icon and there's a certain icon specification. If we go in here, I basically went around, looked through here, found tints that I can copy, and so on. If you have your own file that you'd like to add as an icon, you can use this template that you see here, which where base is your base folder, your base folder for your mod, and then these people had a graphics folder, icons folder, fluid, barreling, and then their empty barrel PNG. For me, I could have had graphics, icons, uh, armors, or items, and then I would have my own special icon for my feather armor. However, I didn't, so we're just going to continue on with the rest of this file. Next, I changed up some resistances to the armor and I added a special physical resistance with a decrease of 8 and percent of 3. Now, off the top of my head, I did not know what this meant, so I again went to the documentation, clicked on resistances, and saw down here 
as a type of resistances. And then in here I looked at what was good and bad, what all this meant. I won't read this out to you, but I highly recommend going to the documentation and reading through whatever you need to do. And that's that. So after we've made our copy of our object, we need to create a recipe so that we can actually craft the object in game. Now to do so, we need to create our own recipe. Now, as you can see here, it's also under the data.raw prototypes with its own special light armor recipe. If we go back to the data.raw website, we can see its own special tab for recipes. And in here holds all of the recipes for each item in game so far. If I go to this recipe, I can see all the properties pre-made for each recipe prototype. And I can change these as I want. Now for my file, I just change a few properties. And the first one is recipe.enabled. If we go to the enabled over here, we see that's optional. And it can be false to disable the recipe being able to be crafted at the start of the game. For example, if we wanted it to be unlocked by technology, we should set it as false in the beginning. Next, I change the recipe name. So this is what we're going to be calling it whenever we need to access it in our own code. After that, I change the ingredients for the recipe or what is needed to make this item in game. Now to see how we can add different ingredients, I'll go over to the recipe prototype page, click on ingredients, and we see it's a table of ingredient prototypes. In here you can see there are two different type of ingredient prototypes. And if you don't specifically put it, I'm rather sure that it automatically defaults to the item, proto item ingredient prototype. Now if you wanted multiple ingredients, all you'd have to do is add a comma and have your own new thing. So we could have an iron stick with a value of two, not a value of two, with the quantity of two. So now to create this new recipe, we would need iron plate, 20 of them, and two iron sticks. However, I don't want that for this specifically, so I'm just gonna delete that quickly. Now in the recipe.result, you say the name of the item that you want this recipe to create, as seen here. It must be the name of an item or else it won't work and you'll get an error. After we have defined everything that we like with our new prototype and recipe, and we linked it all together with the result, we can extend this data in the in-game data by doing data colon extend and then listing out everything we'd like to add. Now before this works in game we have to do one more step and that is add a data.lua file into our project directory. In our mod which I'm calling YouTube version 0.0.4 I added a data file which can be seen over here and here we need to require all of our prototypes that we created. Now in this require, I had the folder name, a dot, and then the file name without, ex without its extension. After you've done this, move your new mod folder into the app data in Factorio as seen in the previous videos, and I'll join you in Factorio. All right, now that we're in Factorio, I'm gonna double check that my mod was loaded properly. I have the correct version in here, confirmed. I'm going to start up a new game to see if our recipe and our item are in there, ready for us to use. Once you're in a new game, I'm going to go into the crafting section, head over to where the armors are at, and now we can see there's this new armor with a lighter tint, because I put on that gray tint, right next to the light armor. We can see that we had the correct amount of ingredients, 20 iron plates, and below we can see the item that it produces with the correct physical percentages. As an exercise, I would see if you can change this crafting time property, which I didn't do in this video, but you can find it in the documentation, and let me know how you guys do there. One thing you might be noticing is 
the name where that would usually be, such as light armor, it's saying unknown key, and then it has item name, feather armor, like we defined it in the code. In order to fix this, that's kind of a different subject, which is locale files, and I'll be covering that in the next video, so be sure to see that if you don't want all of your names of your prototypes to look like this ugly mess, which I'm sure you don't. But other than that, I hope to see you in the next video. That's all I have for this one. If you're enjoying this content, let me know by either hitting the like button, and I'd highly appreciate it. If you want to see more, you can subscribe. You can also follow my Twitter at ModsWally to get updates of when I'm going to be uploading, and also to interact with you guys a little bit more, which is always a plus. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.